and welcome back to Otaku no Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me, where I'm here to kind of review Gundam Seed Destiny. And I say kind of because it's really hard to review this thing when it's a sequel to a series, and if I want to do a spoiler-free review, there's very little I can get into without getting into spoilers, because like who lived and who died and so forth and so on. But um, Seed Destiny is very interesting for a couple of reasons. Um, primarily because of the fact that Gundam Seed Destiny gets people really really upset. Now, I was watching Sea Destiny as it was coming out in Japan, and I was digging it, and I was seeing that the, Jap the Japanese fans were you know, getting into it, and they, there was a lot of passion and interest in Japan, but the American fans were just falling apart. They were just, they, they were hating it. And I, so bear with me here, I was, I was not understanding that, and so I started digging into some of the fans' reactions, and I think that a lot of fans fundamentally misinterpreted some important aspects of Gundam Sea Destiny. Now, I do have to, I do just want to say this. If you're watching this video so that you can watch somebody else slag on Gundam Sea Destiny, or if you're watching it so that if I don't slag on Gundam Sea Destiny, you'll then slag on me or talk about how much you hated the show, please do me a favor and click on another video. I, I'm just, I don't want to hear it. I, uh, please. I, you know, my job here is not to rant. My job is to inform. And moreover, I think a lot of folks just didn't, didn't get things. Now, um, when I was um, digging into this, I saw that a lot of people had, there were two major, two big problems people had with the show. There were other smaller things, which you could certainly debate back and forth, but there were two things which folks were like, this is just unacceptable. Um, and the first had to do with the protagonist. So, you know, Seed Destiny starts out before the first, uh, at the beginning of the first episode with a family running through the woods during a major battle that occurred during Gundam Seed. And long story short, um, they're caught in a bomb blast. Uh, the only one who lives is the boy of the family. Cut to opening credit sequence, you know, Mecha flying around. Um, we then cut to several characters, major characters from Gundam Seed, and um, they're now a few years older, and they're doing stuff, and they're, they're kind of going around, and, and, and we get to see what's going on in their lives. We then follow them for the rest of the first episode. There's a quick cameo by the, the, this boy who's now a little older, he's now a pilot, and then he shows up again at the end of the first episode, piloting a flashy new mecha, a, new, a Gundam. Um, he's really impetuous, he has these flashy, angry red eyes, and as we see in episode two, he's really emotional, he's quick to anger, and he proceeds to chew out one of the main characters, one of the heroes of the first series for the most immature, like, dumb reason ever. It's basically the, did you ever think that some people, like, might suffer because of the battles you were in? And, you know, people had to suffer, you know. And, you know, he's saying this to the person who was defined by how much that person thought about and worried about how many people were suffering and was trying to minimize that as much as possible. Uh, and, was, you know, that was really big. So this, this guy's mouthing off at this character for completely the wrong reason. Um, and so <laughs> the American fans looked at this character and said, Behold. This is the hero of the show, clearly. This must be the hero. Now, Gundam is a mecha series, all right? Mecha series are aimed at boys, and they're basically about growing up. They are, they're, they're stories told to mid, you know, mid to early teen boys and tweens and so forth um, about growing up. You know, the mecha is a, a metaphor for uh, the power you get as you grow up. You know, kind of. Um, as a result, mecha series can go all over the you know, can kind of go all over the map. But the hero has certain specific things that he has to um, conform to. He can do dumb things, you know, et cetera, and so forth. But you can't have an evil main character. Now, Shin, this this guy isn't evil, um, but he's really disrespectful. And he's really, um, there are very few things about him that are honorable or there are things you would look up to. That's not the hero of a mecha series. You know, 
looking at that from that perspective, Shin was never going to be the hero of Gundam Sea Destiny. Clearly a main character, clearly a central character, clearly one of the main pilots, uh, and clearly they were setting him, him up as this troubled teenager who might be, you know, might fall to the dark side, basically. A kind of an Anakin character, if you will. And I'm not just completely pulling this out of my rear end. Um, if you go and you buy New Type magazine, particularly the, the uh, New Type USA, which is translated from the original New Type magazine, one of the premier um, fan uh, otaku magazines in Japan, um, their article on Gundam Sea Destiny when it first came out took this tack. They, they looked at Shin, and New Type, you know, it's New Type, it's about, about Gundam, they're, they're big Gundam fans. Um, they took this tack that Shin was clearly this um, troubled character, and that this, you know, one of these other main characters from Seed was probably more the main character, uh, and that Shin would be sort of um, uh, bounced off this other character, and, and that that's, that's where this, this is going to go. So the Japanese were getting that. They understood that, that Shin, as a character, was not the hero. So as the series progressed, um, it spent a lot of time with, with other characters and, with, and not with Shin. Shin's there a lot. But um, it, it became very clear that Shin was not the hero. And so the American fans pro proclaimed that, that, the, <laughs> uh, that the staff had decided that because the fans just wanted to see the old characters again, that they had just decided to basically steal the show from Shin. And that, that was you know, one of the statements, is that um, you know, the other characters stole the show from Shin. I don't think so. And especially when you look at the first three episodes, and, and really, literally, think about this. Look at the first, first few episodes of Gundam Seed Destiny and count how much time is spent with characters from previous Seed, uh, the, the previous Seed series, and the amount of time spent with Shin. You know, how much on-screen character he gets from the get-go is not much time. So that is, again, I think that, that was sort of a misunderstanding. Um, the second uh, big issue people had is with um, a certain character who returns from Gundam Seed. Um, and I can't, kind of can't get this, uh, uh, around this. Um, um, so, you know, a certain character who I'm going to name does live over from Gundam Seed. And, you know, if you're that obsessed over one single spoiler like that, you can, uh, you can pretend that um, Gundam Seed Destiny does, ignores who lives and who dies in Gundam Seed, if you want to go that direction. Or you can just get over yourself. It's a joke. Um, so Kira Yamato is still in Gundam in Seed Destiny. Um, but he is not a main character for a, a long amount of time, and he spends a lot of time wondering about how he's going to behave and how he should act, because he can kind of... Um, he is uber-powerful. He is incredibly powerful. And people hated that. Um, and so they call him Jesus Yamato, um, which is funny. But th the issue I have with that is that um, Kira is amazingly powerful. And he worries about that. That is a plot point. You know, Kira has unlocked these mysterious abilities. And saying that that is dumb when the series actually deals with it, and when the fact that he is basically a one-man army is a central element to the show that has to be dealt with by a lot of different characters, I think that makes it not dumb. You know, you, you can argue whether it's effective or not, but that, you know, um, they clearly were not, they clearly didn't just throw that in and use it for convenience's sake. That is clearly a, 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 an intended thing because of how much time they spend, you know, um, debating about it, you know, between the characters. Um, so that really didn't make much sense to me as to why folks were freaking out about how powerful Kira was when that is a deliberate part of it. Now, again, you can argue that it's, it's, it's silly for a character to be that powerful, but you know, I will remind you of Amuro Ray in original Mobile Suit Gundam, who was suddenly taking out, you know, nine mobile suits in, you know, a few minutes. Um, in, within the context of that universe, that's ridiculous. That's stupidly powerful. Um, you, you know, and, and within the Seed universe, this is ridiculously powerful. So, you know, again, you, you can say that seems silly to you. That's fine. What I'm saying is that that is clearly not arbitrary, um, nor was it um, um, thoughtlessly done. Yeah. 
Uh, now there are other issues. Um, you know, another character that, that, that does show up is Kagali, and um, she waffles a lot. She is very waffly in this. That said, and again, I'm trying not to do spoilers, that is a major problem. A lot of Destiny centers around the idea of holding back versus taking action. Um, and the fact that Kagali becomes very indecisive becomes a major important thing. Bad things happen as a result of that. Um, and um, you know, it forces certain things. So again, you can argue whether that is the right thing to do. And I got, I got tired of that after a while. I certainly agree with that. Um, but again, it was not thoughtlessly done. And, and this is one of my problems with a lot of these frustrations, is that folks were, were throwing up their hands as though um, that the folks behind Gundam Sea Destiny were just like caving to special interest groups. When there's no, no, no direct evidence of, of that, um, there's no direct evidence in the, in, in the sense that um, plot points come out of nowhere for stupid reasons. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get lots of angry comments about that, but uh, screw you. Uh, it's a joke. Um, no, it's not. Yeah, anyway, um, point being, um, people saw this Jesus Yamato thing and interpreted that as the, um, as the crew loving the character so much that they just wanted to make him, you know, all powerful. If that's true, the character wouldn't suffer. That's true, the character wouldn't be concerned about how powerful he is. That wouldn't be a plot point, in other words. Um, that's not how Mary Sue's work, basically. Um, um, so, yeah, again, you, you can certainly argue whether you like things uh, uh, in that, but I didn't find these, these plot elements just you know, ridiculous or coming out of nowhere. I, they, they were, you know, they actually were important. Now, um, getting back to the, the story itself, um, just like Seed uses certain elements from original Gundam and then goes off in different directions with them. Um, no, it is not a retread of original Gundam. Um, so C Destiny brings back elements from other, other Gundam series and does things with, with, with those. Um, and um, so some things you may recognize if, you, if, you, if you've seen other Gundams before. If not, again, it, it doesn't matter. You're, you're not going to be confused because they are reinvented for this new world. It's not like you, know, you need to know who this character was. They're not bringing characters from other sh shows in, fortunately. Um, there are some beautiful moments, some very memorable moments in, in, in the series, and some surprising plot twists. I mean, it, it really, you know, uh, moves some things around. Um, and um, I really appreciated the mix between old characters and new characters. It was clear to me, and I'm not trying to be, you know, arrogant, oh, I saw all this coming. Because uh, there are a lot of things in Gundam Sea Destiny that other folks saw coming, I did not. I was completely surprised by. But it was clear to me that Sea Destiny was a sequel to original Seed, with a bunch of the old characters back and some new characters back. But that, that's another thing that kind of surprised me. Folks were like, oh my gosh, you know, a bunch of the, the, the old characters were in Seed Destiny. That's what happens in sequel series. It's like people, you know, um, freaking out about um, Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex, um, the second season, for the fact that all the, the, the original characters are back. Well, well yeah. Why, why, why wouldn't that be? I, I just, I, so, so, you know, I didn't get a lot of these just um, vile, you know, Gundam Seed Destiny is, is just, you know, s ridiculously, you know, um, breaks all the laws of physics when it actually, you know, does pretty much what a Gundam sequel series is supposed to do. Um, if you look back at Zeta, Zeta brings back, uh, Zeta has, uh, you know, a pretty healthy mix of original characters and new characters, more new characters than original. Um, same thing with Double Zeta. Some new characters, some old characters. So I, 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 didn't, I didn't get that. I didn't get why, why that would be. So long story short, um, and I know this kind of goes all over the place, but um, you know, Sea Destiny is a sequel series. Um, it continues on. I don't think it's as dumb as people say. I, I gotta say. So I don't know. Um, I hope this was helpful to you. Um, if you're going into a comments section right now to tell me about how stupid and dumb I am because I'm stupid and dumb, or about how stupid and dumb Gundam Seed Destiny is because it's stupid and dumb. I just want to point out that I just spent a fair amount of time arguing that the fans who don't like this series jump to conclusions and have kind of, or some of them um, have presented um, poorly thought out kind of reactionary responses to the show. 
So I just want to warn you to be careful what you type in the comment section here. If you want your opinion to be, you know, seen in a positive light. I'll be more than happy to discuss particular issues and particular, um, you know, events and things. And like I said, there's certainly elements of Sea Destiny that I didn't, you know, I wasn't crazy about. Uh, that I thought were rushed or, or, or so forth and so on. But, you know, uh, yeah. I liked it. I, I really liked it. There, there were some cool characters, cool moments. Uh, fun things. It's, it's more giant robots bashing each other. So I, I don't know. So anyway, th those are my thoughts. Uh, feel free to stop by, stop by streamsugi.com to see if Sea Destiny is streaming somewhere on the internet legally. Um, otherwise, feel free to stop by otakunovideo.net where we have uh, different places where you can chat about cool stuff like um, uh, uh, mecha series and um, other, other things like that that actually deal with um, psychology and issues like that. That's actually an interesting point about Sea Destiny that I will say before I, I wrap up. Um, Sea Destiny, um, like Seed uh, before it, deals with psychological elements quite a bit. They're, they're not, not, not just psychological, philosophical. There's a lot of philosophy in Gundam Sea Destiny about what is right and what is wrong. Um, and it, it, it's, it's presented at, 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 on a much uh, more clear level than a lot of series are willing to do. Um, where th there are questions that, that are pretty fundamental to the human condition. That the Gundam Sea Destiny raises. Um, so I want to give it props for that, um, and for the fact that it, it doesn't. It, it comes up with firm answers to that that aren't trite. You know, they, they don't say, "Well, we, you just do X and then everything's okay." Just that you know, here's one view, and mm, I'm I'm over here. Um, you know. So, uh, mm. um, anyway, so the, the, that, those are my thoughts, and I hope that you find this useful. Uh, and thanks for for sticking around this really weird, chaotic kind of non-review until the end. So thanks for watching.